freekeen.com. First, I want to welcome you all to the surveillance state where control freaks will spy on your emails. And um, I hear, is it the NSA that has a nice big new spy center out in Colorado or wherever it is? and has lists of their enemies, people they think are, are scary and shouldn't fly on planes and say bad things about the government. And who knows, they might even have a spy here. And some people's response to that would be to tell you, keep your opinions to yourself. Uh, watch what you say, keep your head down, stay below the radar, don't draw attention to yourself. My message today is basically the exact opposite of that. The control freaks want people scared into silence by their police state garbage. That's why they do it. If you look at them portraying however many millions of people as potential domestic terrorists, if you like Ron Paul, if you mention the Constitution, if you don't like the IRS or the Federal Reserve, you might be a terrorist. They're not saying that because they actually believe that. They know how stupid it is to say that. They're saying that because they want to intimidate you into not saying what you think. Students, and you can't be around here doing your politics around the students. Okay? I'm not doing Please head that way. Education. Please head that way. Based on what, what charge? Because I'm asking you nicely. The, the legalese term for this is chilling effect, where they they don't think they could get away with coming right out and saying, if you criticize us, we'll throw you in a cage. They don't think they could quite get away with that. So instead, they do a whole lot of indirect things to try to intimidate you into censoring yourself, basically, into choosing not to say what you think because you might get singled out. You might get stuck on some list. You might have people monitoring your mail or your phone calls or your emails or whatever else. So you keep to yourself. You don't want to make trouble. Now, the result of that is that hardly anybody out there can actually get a grip on popular opinion. Because each of us gauges popular opinion by what we hear other people saying. And if all the people who don't like the IRS or don't like the Fed or don't like the constant warmongering or whatever the government's doing, if all of them can be intimidated into not speaking out, or even most of them, the rest of the world will get the impression that Americans don't care about that. Because, hey, they're not talking about it. This is how tyrants fabricate popular opinion. If they can silence dissent through intimidation, then all the normal people out there who don't think about politics and who don't think about philosophy can continue to comfortably believe that everybody else thinks a huge military is just fine. Everybody else thinks the TSA groping and doing e-strips of everybody is just fine. That the IRS robbing everybody blind is just fine. That the giant counterfeiting ring is just fine. Because, hey, if it wasn't, people would be speaking out against it. And if they can intimidate you into not even talking to your friends and family about it, then they win because that gives the impression that nobody thinks what you think. Now, I'm well aware of the problems with trying to talk to normal people who've never thought about philosophy or politics. You don't really want a conflict. You don't really want an argument. You don't really want them to think that you're a weirdo. There's all these uncomfortable things that come up if you challenge someone's paradigm. That's how it's always been. That's how it will always be. People don't like to have their paradigms challenged, and they get uncomfortable and defensive when you do. I would use an analogy. Suppose you were alive a couple hundred years ago, down south, when overt slavery was legal, before they covered it up with propaganda and called it an income tax. And you're hanging around with people, and you come to find out that one of the people there is a slave owner. And you're thinking, oh man, what do I do? Like, it's a party, I don't want to cause trouble and, and have everyone get mad at me. Nobody else is saying anything about it, so apparently they're all fine with it. Do I just, you know, stay quiet and not say what I think? Well, what's the result of doing that? 
If you do that and the guy next to you does that, you didn't know he agreed with you because he didn't dare to speak either. The guy next to him agrees too, but he didn't dare to speak either. Everyone in the room thinks that everybody, except maybe themselves, is just fine with slavery. But if you speak up and say, um, hey buddy, that's totally evil. Slavery is evil. Pretending you own another human being is evil. And I don't care if the whole room thinks I'm wrong. I know this is evil and I have an obligation to say so. And interestingly, when you do that, suddenly you'll find one or two or ten or a hundred other people saying, yeah, we kind of thought that too, but didn't want to say so. That's the power of false popular opinion. Popular opinion that doesn't actually reflect what people believe, but is the result of everyone thinking they're the only one and everyone thinking, well, I don't want to go against the flow. When the truth, when it's uncomfortable to say the truth, when it's unpopular to say the truth, when it's dangerous to say the truth, that's when it's most important to say the truth. Standing in a room now and saying slavery is evil, whoopee-doo. The time to say it is when most people haven't thought about that yet. And most people still accept the bogus evil status quo. That's the time to speak out. If, you, if you're standing around thinking, well, I'll wait around till everybody else says it, then you're a coward and you will do nothing to push humanity and the world in the direction it should be going. The time to speak out is when people don't want to hear it. And the downside is that they don't want to hear it. <laughs> and they don't respond nicely when you do. Egypt people is a very nice and if the Egypt people take my advice they will strike down the one party state they fear but that had better not happen here cuz we know that everything would fall apart if the city of Keen New Hampshire starts to listen to the malcontents at Free Keen and sort of kind of cut spending Cause the government needs some expensive things Like the wasteful 34 West building And the boondoggle jail where we put hat wearers And other people who could be considered swearers Freaking.com